Coming up on today's nightly news. The EU sets new record for hot air production. Violent protests erupt in Spain after miners protest. The great Euro crash 2012. And today from our letters section we begin a new seven part series that was written by Ron LaBelle. I'm Rick Timmis and this is the unit nightly news. EU sets new record for hot air production. We will do whatever it takes. We will reduce pigs borrowing costs and we will not let the euro fail. Blah, 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 blah. Promises, promises, writes Dr. Eric Edmund. Even the Yanks, in the person of Timothy Geithner, are spewing out the rhetoric like a grumbling volcano. But action, and more important, comprehensible action that will impress the markets. Nah, none of that. Now, you can read the full article from Dr. Eric Edmund on our website, and I've put the links below. Violent protests erupt in Spain after miners' protests. Fearing for their livelihoods, they had trudged day and night across the country to bring their protests to the capital, and today, the anger of Spain's coal miners spilled over into violence on the streets of Madrid. As the miners marched down the city's main boulevards chanting, waving banners, brandishing sticks and setting off firecrackers amid clouds of thick smoke, they were confronted by riot police. Now, I pulled this article from Recent History on theunit.com and it leads into the next story rather well. You see, we're seeing the collapse of whole nation states and we're not just talking one or two here. Spain, Ireland, Portugal, Greece... Italy and even France. The Great Euro Crash 2012. For more than two years, Europe has teetered on the edge of an economic precipice, one of the factors that has pushed Britain back into recession. How exactly did Europe get itself into the current financial mess? Talking to historians, economists and politicians, BBC business editor Robert Preston takes a long view of the euro. From Churchill's vision of the United States of Europe to the bailouts of Greece, Portugal and Ireland. Meeting a property developer in Ireland, a taxi driver in Rome and a German manufacturing worker, the film exposes the high costs being paid by European workers today for the dream of monetary union. Now, this hour-long video produced by the BBC is well-researched and it's informative. And in the latest episode of Eurocon, Dr Eric Edmund warned that if we were to continue on the current path, this situation will continue to escalate. If we continue to ignore this, then these problems will be coming to a street near you soon. Surely it cannot be right that the people are being starved and impoverished whilst our leaders spend the money bailing out bankers and giving tax holidays to international corporations. Let me know what you think by leaving me your comments. Written by Ron LaBelle and based on the work of Mick Greenoff, The Nightly News brings you a new seven-part series. Now, due to its importance, I'm going to read each letter in full and provide links to all seven parts so you can review all of it at your leisure. Part 1. Brave New Europe, an audit of the European Union project. The UK has been in the EU for decades now, but have we been a member of this exclusive and expensive club for the right reasons? Or has the public been hoodwinked into thinking all is well being in a greater union of European states? Over the next seven articles, I will provide various items that have appeared in the pamphlet Brave New Europe by Mick Greenoff, who I am grateful to for giving me permission to use all of the items in his publication. The intent in doing so is to give you the public information that has been approved as being correct with additional notes on what is actually happening in the present EU, which you may or may not know about. 
Now at the end, I will leave it up to you to make your own minds up about whether we should remain or withdraw from the superstate called the European Union. At no time will it be a biased opinion from myself, but a true reflection of the EU. The objective of this article is to examine the current progress of the EU to identify the desired aims and the nature of its supporters. In doing so, it is hoped to determine its democratic credentials with regards to the UK. Now, the concept of a united European single state authority is by no means a new idea. The great Roman Empire was the first to try this out, followed by several more under various popes, a Charlemagne, the French under Napoleon, Hitler's Third Reich and Stalin's Soviet Socialism all followed the desire to rule a greater Europe. They were all virtually ruthless authoritarian or dictatorships, all viewed Britain with covetous eyes but apart from the Roman and Normans under William the Conqueror none of them made it across the Channel. The British people have for hundreds of years been spared the excess of an effective authoritarian state. Unlike the suffering of mainland Europe, the British have enjoyed a long history of comparative personal freedom, including free speech, protection of just laws, an independent legal and judiciary system, where there is a bias of innocence until proven guilty. On the other hand, Europe has been racked by many despotic states and wars of appalling savagery and destruction, culminating after World War II in the separation, by force, of Europe into semi-democratic states in the West and dictatorship states run by Russia in the East. If there was to be any everlasting peace between the free nations in the West of Europe, then a new system of comprehensive industrial and cultural exchanges and free trade across the borders of these free states had to be formed on the basis that each maintained their own independent political and sovereign integrity. This concept was to be dramatically changed by the EU founding fathers when they produced their first draft of the European Economic Community. The aim of this was to render all the nations of Europe into a single amorphous state run by an unelected higher authority and an unaccountable political elite. Now you can link to this first part of Brave New Europe in the links below and I also provide links to the other six parts in the series too and I'll be covering those as the week goes by. One. Well, that's all for me at the Unit Nightly News. You can get lots more news and stories and information on our website, www.theunit.com. You can get in touch with us there, and we do particularly welcome your letters and points of view. You can follow us on Twitter. Our Twitter username is the E Unit, and remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel for all of our regular updates. Finally, of course, you can join me and the rest of the team for interactive discussion and debate on Google Plus anytime. Rick Timmis, for the Unit Nightly News, I'll see you soon. <laughs>